I can't lie to you about your chances. Republic of Valverde. Stop trying to be so I return to Barbados. See. Remember, Sal, I promised to kill the last. Hi, I'm Dylan, and this is not exactly normal. What if I told you that years before Tony and the gang had to team up to fight the unfortunately chopperless Thanos, there was another cinematic universe filled with heroes of high degrees of badassery that rival Earth's mightiest? Welcome to the Valverde Cinematic Universe, the secret $5 billion shared universe of films that despite what the internet might have you believe, doesn't really exist. Screenwriter Steven D'Souza first created the fictional country of Valverde for an episode of Bionic Woman in the late 70s, to serve as a stand-in Banana Republic in order to avoid offending any real South or Central American countries. But it would be a few years before the Valverde Cinematic Universe would make its inaugural cinematic debut. 1985. Coca-Cola had just ruined Coke, the first dot-com was registered, and a muscular as hell Arnold Schwarzenegger, hot off the Terminator, set out to capture the hearts and minds of the nation in Commando. Co-written by Steven D'Souza, the film surrounds John Matrix, a retired special ops commando who's blackmailed into assassinating the leader of a fictional South American country called Valverde. You're going to return to Valverde? Have some beers in Valverde, Matrix. Excuse me, how long is the flight? We land in Valverde in exactly 11 hours. As you may have guessed, it doesn't go well for the blackmailers. <laughs> remember, Sally, when I promised to kill you last? That's what Matrix, you did! I lied. Now, unlike the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which from the start was meant to assemble into something greater with character, plot, and setting crossovers, the Valverdeverse, being entirely unofficial, never became more than a series of minor Easter eggs planted primarily by the universe's creator, Steven D'Souza, who describes the supposed shared universe as his, quote, little inside baseball joke. Despite not being a real shared universe of films, you may be inclined to call it such, just to rub it in the nose of Marvel fans by saying Fox did it first. Well, mostly Fox. If you are a believer, the first big jump you'll have to make is Predator. You son of a bitch. Released in 1987, Predator features yet again buff as hell Arnold on a mission to extract a hostage out of an unnamed South American country. Quickly, his team begins to get picked off one by one by a predator, oh, there's the name, that despite its many alien advantages, is quite evenly matched by Arnold's biceps and trap building skills. Come on. Come on. Do it. Do it! Come on. Come on. Kill me, I'm here! Kill me! I'm here! Kill me! Come on! Kill me! I'm here! Come on! Do it now! Kill me! So what does Predator have to do with Valverde? Well, despite the difficulty of having a shared universe in which the same actor plays two prominent characters, Steven D'Souza, who had nothing to do with the film, claimed in an interview with Empire that the film was set in Valverde. But it's not. According to the 2010 entry in the Predator saga, Predators, the original film took place in Guatemala, not Valverde. 87 Guatemala. A spec ops team went into the jungle. High end. Six men plus a CIA liaison. Only one made it out. Unfortunately, this derails a lot of the universe, but let's continue down the rabbit hole regardless. If we discount the Guatemala comment from Predators as fake news, then the shared universe gets a hell of a lot more interesting. 
For starters, we can include the entirety of the Alien franchise, even the unfortunately made new ones. Not only are there somehow two Alien vs. Predator movies, but there is a prominent easter egg in Predator 2 of a xenomorph skull in the Predator's trophy rack. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. The Alien movies take us in two exciting, totally planned directions. The first is Blade Runner. What's that gonna prove? Indulge me. As you may or may not know, the Wayland yutani Corporation is the fictional evil company that owned the Nostromo and Alien, and attempted several times the really flawless idea of getting their own real life xenomorph. Both Blade Runner and Alien are Ridley Scott creations, and both deal with artificial intelligence in a similar enough manner. But the real kicker is the Tyrell Wayland connection, which diehard believers think places Blade Runner into the Valverde cinematic universe. It doesn't, but. Sure. In a speech by Peter Wayland on the bonus features of Prometheus, he goes on to describe his mentor and long departed competitor as, quote, God on top of a pyramid who chose to replicate the power of creation, and that he, being Wayland, always suggested he stick with simple robotics instead of those genetic abominations he enslaved and sold off world. The director for that bonus content, Charles de Lazarica, sorry if I mispronounced that, said in an interview that it was just him being fun and cutesy, and it was up to Ridley Scott to decide if it was actually canon or not. He hasn't weighed in. Soldier, starring Kurt Russell, was released in 1998 and was written by David Peoples, who co-wrote Blade Runner. Peoples intended Soldier to be a spiritual successor to Blade Runner and places the two films in a shared universe. Both films pull a lot of themes from Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, and one of the spinners, or flying cars, from Blade Runner can be found in Soldier. The next level of the rabbit hole takes us out of the cinema, but if Marvel can count ninja-filled TV shows as part of their cinematic universe, we can count comic books as part of ours, right? Sure. In the year 2000, Dark Horse published a series of comics called Alien vs. Predator vs. Terminator. So if you're counting, Arnold Schwarzenegger has made not one, not two, but three appearances as separate prominent characters in the supposed Valverde cinematic universe. But quite possibly the greatest iteration of the vs. Predator anthology is Archie vs. Predator. Published in 2015 by Dark Horse and Archie Comics, Archie vs. Predator tells the story of Archie and his friends on spring break when a predator shows up in the nearby jungle. After a fight between Betty and Veronica, the predator follows the game back to Riverdale, where it hunts and kills several of Archie's friends. Oh, and the predator speaks in emoji. It rules. I've waited a lifetime for this, and I'm not going to miss the chance. The Archie connection takes us down a long path of inclusions. In 1994, Archie met The Punisher, which I guess brings in the entirety of the Marvel comics. And very recently, Archie met Batman, which also ties in the DC comics, I guess. Continuing down the road of comics, Sheena, Dark Rising, published in 2008, was set in Valverde City. The issue was actually co-written by Steven D'Souza. But back to Archie. Of all the ridiculous inclusions in this supposed shared universe, this one is probably the most apropos. In 2013, Archie met the students of Glee. I don't care so much about that. But the Archie vs. Saga wouldn't be complete without Archie vs. Sharknado. No kidding, you're a bit late on that one in which Betty and Veronica, on a trip to DC, fight a series of airborne, tornado-propelled sharks incredibly graphically, before heading back to Riverdale to save Archie and the gang from said Sharknado. It's pretty fantastic. It's good. Not great. The Predator comics take us down another versus path, this one connecting back to another Steven D'Souza co-written film. Enter Predator vs. Judge Dredd a trilogy of comic books from 1997 that pit these two ultimate badasses against each other in Mortal Kombat. Now back to Steven D'Souza. He co-wrote Die Hard 2 in 1990, in which Bruce Willis, as John McClane, finds himself yet again between bad guys and the things that the bad guys want to do. In this case, the baddies are a group of Valverde nationalists and apparently experienced air traffic controllers attempting to rescue their General Esperanza from extradition to the United States. Atkins is in a warmer climb with a story that grows hotter by the minute. Security was tight today at Escalon Airport in the Republic of Valverde. This so-called canon is extended throughout the Die Hard franchise, but the first and third films share an additional connection, a company called Pacific Courier. In Die Hard, the van that Hans Gruber and his buddies used to sneak into Nakatomi Tower is a Pacific Courier van. 
And in Die Hard with a Vengeance, the company's eastern sister offshoot, Atlantic Courier, has one of their vans blown up by a vengeful Simon Gruber. But it doesn't stop there. Pacific Courier also owns some planes, and in movies, planes are for blowing up. In 1995 Speed, starring Keanu Reeves as a very helpful commuter, towards the end of the film said speeding bus crashes into an airplane, which if you look closely is a Pacific Courier plane. Couriers aside, Die Hard contains one last connection, and it's Gail Wallace. Good evening, this is Harvey Johnson. And I'm Gail Wallens, and this is Nightline News at 10. Played by Mary Ellen Trainer, Gail Wallens is the news anchor featured throughout Die Hard, and she reprised her role three years later in the Denzel Washington flick, Ricochet. This is Gail Wallens, reporting live from the Twin Towers, where a life and death struggle has just concluded. On the TV side of things, Valverde makes an appearance in the Steven D'Souza-created show Supercarrier in 1988, as well as the show Adventure Inc. in 2002. So, to sum up, the totally real Valverde Cinematic Universe stars Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sigourney Weaver, Bruce Willis, Keanu Reeves, Denzel Washington, Harrison Ford, and Kurt Russell, and is made up of Commando, four Predator movies and comics, two Alien vs. Predator movies, six Alien movies and comics, five Die Hard movies, five Terminator movies, the TV show and comics, two Speed movies, two Blade Runner movies, six Sharknado movies, two Judge Dredd movies and comics, Sheena the Movie, TV series and comics, Glee, Riverdale, Josie and the Pussycats, Supercarrier, Bionic Woman, The Six Million Dollar Man, Adventure Inc., and Ricochet. Not to mention Archie, and apparently the entirety of the DC and Marvel comics. For a grand total of 38 films, 8 TV shows, and basically all of the comic books. Take that, Marvel! Right? The Val Verde Cinematic Universe is as much a cinematic universe as any other films that share a fictional country, company, or prop, which would make the LCSTU, or Let's Chip Share Television Universe, the real cash cow, featuring the following TV shows. guys want me to talk about in my next episode please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of not exactly normal as often as i can make them if you'd like to help me make episodes more frequently i'd be greatly appreciative if you'd support me on patreon also if you've been wondering where i've been all summer i was at the cottage building a bunkie with my dad for a portion of it which was exciting here's a photo of me looking super handy i went to greece for a while with my girlfriend which is exciting and i've been hard at work on my other youtube series which you may or may not know exists called animal logic I almost forgot the name you should go check that out if you haven't already anyways thanks for watching <sighs>